Hi, this is Tony Henderson Mayers, and I want to thank you for tuning in to Moments of Inspiration, Encouragement, and Prayer. And I know you may be thinking, well, you talk about romantic relationships. Yes, but I also talk about family, friendship, business relationships, relationships with yourself, God, and your money. And this series, Moments of Inspiration and Prayer, um, helps us to get a better relationship with God. And so I hope you enjoyed this portion of my Tony Henderson Mayers page. And without further ado, here is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. Today, we're going to talk about Are You Born of God? right after this. Trust, and that's what I trust, and that's what I trust, and we don't know freezer. 
This is Tony Henderson Mayer's television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur, known as Wise Courtship all over social media because of my book with a three-step system. It will help you determine the true character and the true intent of your love interest. And this is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer where we come together to read God's word, to pray over your concerns, and give you encouragement as you walk out of the door. I want to thank everyone for coming and tuning into this broadcast. Thank you for watching on various platforms and make sure if you're able, please like, comment and share this broadcast with someone so that they may be blessed as well. And so we're gonna get right into this word and I'm going to be reading um, this scripture for you. So make sure you get your iPad, your Bibles, your apparatuses, any way that you get God's word. So let's get right into it, shall we? All right, 1 John 4, 7 through 21, and it reads, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. Verse 16, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or a sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they, can, whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. And so I just want to read um, 
the first part of that scripture again. I know I read a lot, but I want to read the first part again. And it says, dear friends, let us love one another, starting at verse seven. Um, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. So today we're going to talk about, are you born of God? And the scripture tells us that everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Wow. It says, because you, if you don't know God, then you don't know love. You know, you can't love because you've got to have God in you in order to love. And I know that there are some people who are saying, oh, I love my husband. I love my children. I, love, I don't know what you're talking about, but we're talking about that true love, that unconditional love. You have to have God in you to be able to do that. Okay. You have to have God uh, in you to do it and to do it correctly. All right. We're not talking about lust. We're not even talking about responsibility. We're not even talking about moral acts, okay? We're talking about the love of God that he has. You can only get that from God himself because God himself is love. And so it's so important to know if you're born of God. And last time we talked about, you know, a lot about hatred, you know, and um, how to prove you, you love God. And it's hard to prove you love God when you have hate in your heart. But conversely, you need to have love. And the Bible says that love covers over a multitude of sins. And you know, some many of us have had like acquaintances or what have you in our lives where there's people who constantly point out the wrongs that you have done. But that love, when you have people who love you, um, that love covers those wrongs. And it's not to say that you do wrong and everybody ignores it. But what is to say is that you don't focus in on the things that people do wrong. You make allowances for them because you love them. You forgive them a lot easier because you love them. It does not mean you accept the bad behavior. It does not mean that you don't challenge them to do better in their lives. Of course we do that. We do that with our children. You know, when they do something wrong, we challenge them to do what's right. Sometimes we have to discipline them. Um, sometimes we have to take some things away in order for them to do what is right, you know, to help them do what is right. Sometimes we have to have long conversations to help them do what's alter their behavior or, or, or um, restrict some things in order to get them to see what they have done is wrong, but we don't hate them. You know, um, our love covers over the fact that they have made some mistakes. We all have made mistakes and we all really should love one another and make allowances for one another, not excusing what they have done wrong, but, you know, just really giving people a chance to be human, you know, because we do make mistakes. Um, I remember there, uh, someone had told me about, I know years ago, you know, before in the church, you had a baby, honey, you had to go before the church, you had a baby out of what lot. And I don't know why they never got the guy, but they always made the woman go before, you know, with the baby. And I remember uh, someone was mentioning to me that there was a woman uh, in the church that crucified them, you know, like when they were having a baby, you know, they had a baby out of what, like, and it was a, a mistake. And it turns out that it had been a date rape, really, you know, it was not something that they planned, not something they wanted to do, but somebody forced themselves on them and they had the baby. And of course the guy's gone. Nobody makes the guy stand up before the church. They always make the girl stand up. And uh, people, you know, throw stones and they're so, just so hor horrible. And she found out that this one lady that was really making her life miserable, when she died, the woman died, she found out the woman that crucified her had nine children and they all had different dads. <laughs> I'm laughing not because of that situation, but I'm laughing because of the hypocrisy that we tend to show on other people. We've got to do better. Somebody put that in the chat box. Somebody tell their neighbor, somebody tweet this out. We've got to do better. We've got to show love and show kindness and compassion. And here, this woman never spoke about it, but she actually was date raped. 
okay? And whether she was date raped or not, we still need to have compassion, but the, the extra burden of the fact that she knew she was date raped, she didn't know who, who to tell, she didn't believe, think people would believe her, folk were already criticizing her. And, and you know, we just, we just have to do better. We have to show love. And if you have enough nerve to wear the banner of Jesus Christ over your head, over your bosom, you got enough nerve to carry the Bible, honey, big enough as, as a three-year-old child. If you got enough nerve to do that, you got to have enough nerve to show God's love. Hmm. I mean, for you to share this, because I'm teaching better than you even paying attention. We've got to do better. Christianity and what is taught in the Bible is not just about going on Sunday, raising holy hands. And some, some, not all, are the people who are giving a whole lot of fuss because they don't want to wear a mask. And they're giving a lot of fuss because the church doors, you know, they're limiting how many people can come in or you have to do it on live stream. Some of those who are fussing and cussing about that will tell you off if you step on their toe. Y'all not listening. It's not about just getting into the church building, okay? It's not just about that. That's important. The Bible tells us not to forsake this, uh, the assembling of ourselves together. So we need to come together. We need to assemble. But the church is the bodies of people. It is not the building. So we can, we can, we can come together on a mountaintop. Didn't Jesus preach his sermon? the Sermon on the Mount. We can, we can come together under a tent. We can come together in someone's house. Um, um, my husband and I, when a church was starting in Pennsylvania, when we were out there, they had the church in our home until they got to the school, okay? You can definitely do those types of things. And so live stream is a wonderful instrument. Do I want to go back into the church? Yes, I do. But worship, in what well, he says, where two or three are gathered, I'm in the midst, so worship, you can worship God alone, but if you want to have the church, it's all, it's two or three bodies of people who say they believe that is the church. But it's more important to have the church here and to, to, uh, to love and extend yourselves to other people so that they can say, that is what Christianity is about. And I want to know more about Jesus. And just in case you want to know more about him, and you want to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not just about being in the church. That's important. You should be there. You should worship. But it's more important to live it so that people can see how God's love has changed your life and how it can change them. And if you want Jesus Christ in your life, you just got to confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. He died on the cross for your sins and mine. He's your Lord and he's your Savior. And you've got to believe it in your heart. And the Bible says, if you do that, you will be saved. And so it's so important for us to do that. But more importantly, after we've accepted him, we've got to live it. And we've got to show the love of God one to another. We should never be the people who condemn people. Yes, we recognize when people do wrong and we can even outline some things that they, how they can do better, you know, but we've got to be loving. It's so much easier to get medicine down with a spoonful of sugar than to, to stuff it down with vinegar, okay? <laughs> and so we've got to learn how to do better, how to love one another. Well, I want to pray for your concerns. Make sure that you put your prayer requests in the chat box. You can also email them to me at info at wisecourtship.com and we're going to pray for you. So I'm going to go ahead and pray. If you join me, I would really love that. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just love you and we bless you and we honor you. We just lift you up, God. You are so good. And, you know, you're just a, an amazing savior and master. We just a wonderful father and provider. We just love you, God. You are so awesome and so amazing. God, please forgive us for the things that we have done wrong, especially when we have not loved our brothers and our sisters, when we've been too harsh and too um, unkind, maybe not forgiving. God, forgive us. Help us to be the lights that you called us to be. Help us to live the life that you expect us to live as Christians. 
God, help us to be so loving that others will say, what must I do to be saved? What do I need to be do to live a life like what you're living, full of joy and full of peace? God, we thank you for all that you have blessed us with. We thank you for keeping us even in the midst of a pand pandemic. We thank you for helping us even in grief and sorrow and loss and financial calam calamity. We thank you for keeping us meeting every need. We thank you, God, so much. God, we pray for all of these concerns, all of these concerns that are being put up through the chat box and who are being sent to me in emails and messenger. God, we pray for each one. All the sicknesses, God, we pray for. For the lonely hearts, God, for the death of loved ones, for those who had financial situations that they don't know how they're going to get out of. God, give them strategy. Give them ideas, give them inventions, increase them, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God, we pray for our world leaders. We pray for our president. We pray, oh God, that you would um, heal the United States of America and heal these hating hearts, God. Turn hate into love, hate, turn sorrow into laughter. In the name of Jesus, we pray you've never failed us. And we're crying out to you. You said this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his troubles. And we believe, God, that you hear us even now as we cry out to you. We need you so much, God. And we bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. And I pray that you are blessed by this. And I pray that you receive Jesus Christ in your heart. And if you're leaving a prayer request, know that I am praying for you. We have a word of encouragement from Tamika Reed. Hi, my name is Tamika Reed. I am a self-published author, motivational speaker, and I am stopping through today to share with you all a motivational message in a poem that I wrote. The title of the poem is God is Good because we all know that God is good. We've been in situations we thought we couldn't get out of, but yet we was able to make it through, right? So listen, I just want to say in this poem, God is good. I don't care what nobody said. God has brought me from a mighty long way. I remember day by day, I had to fight, cry, and pray, praying that God would take me away from the pain someday. There were dark days I didn't know what to do but I prayed and prayed and prayed for a breakthrough. I am here, still standing, smiling and laughing, moving forward from all the mess that has happened. It was painful, but I remained faithful. God is good. I am so grateful. God is good. I am so thankful. God is good. I feel so peaceful. God is good. I feel so joyful. God is good. It feels good to feel wonderful. So listen, always remember that if you are going to pray about something, you have to believe that God is working behind the scenes on your behalf, okay? And that's where your faith comes in at because faith is to believe in the things that you cannot see. And as long as you have that faith, it gives you a peace of mind. A peace of mind knowing that your situation is being worked out. Things is going to get better. You don't know what to expect, of course, but that's faith. So you got to hold on to that faith and believe that everything is going to be okay. Faith will give you that strength to keep on pushing, knowing that God has it all under control. And also remember that sometimes Bad things has to happen in order for something good to happen. So whatever you are going through right now, stay strong. Hold on. Keep on striving and surviving, baby, because you got this. You will make it through. It may not seem like you're going to make it, but trust me when I tell you, you will make it through. Things will get better. You just have to keep on pushing. Keep on pushing. Keep on going. Keep on holding on to that faith and believe that God 
is working on your behalf. So remember, if you're going to pray about it, let go and let God, okay? And also remember, sometimes our prayers don't get answered the way we want it to get answered. But you have to remember that it will work out for your good. So stay strong, you guys. Stay safe. Keep on pushing. Don't give up. No matter what happens, do not give up. Believe that your situation will get better. Believe that you will get through this. Believe that God has it all under control and you're going to be all right. Thank you. <laughs> I want to thank Marcus Cox for his music ministry. And I want to thank uh, author Tamika Reed for her words of encouragement. We were so blessed by it. Well, I've got to go, but you can visit me on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere as Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayers. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you guys and there's nothing you can do about it. And in this day and age of alternative facts, things spinning way out of control, God is still on his throne. And he's still in control. And until Jesus comes back, we got to learn to watch, fight, and pray. Take care. Well, hello there, each and every one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell. Click it for me so that you will know anytime I upload a new video. You subscribe to the Wise Courtship Philosophy? then you need to get your Wise Courtship gear at the Wise Courtship store. Go to bit.ly forward slash Wise Courtship store. All the letters are lowercase. They make amazing gifts from children, adults, men and women, jewelry, hats, cell phone cases, t-shirts, and more. Represent Wise Courtship by going to bit.ly forward slash Wise Courtship store. Thank <laughs> you.